welcome to this uh, webinar session from Green World on HAZOP studies. Let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Sujit Menon. I work as Director of Operations with Green World. We have our uh, speaker for the day and uh, our HAZOP champion, Mr. Vinod Rucharya, uh, who would take over in a short while from me. I would request you all to stay connected for the entire uh, webinar session. I would come back in, into the session uh, towards uh, the end. Thank you so much once again for joining us. Uh, Mr. Vinod Richaria, over to you. Thank you. My name is Vinod Richaria. I have completed 44 years of my working life on 14th of January 2021, just a few days back. We are all safety professional. So what I thought the best thing, as for my thinking, to start HEJO, that is Hazard and Operability Study. We are there. We can help you to give inputs to tell you more about hijab, what is hijab, how does it help, uh, how to conduct it, who should conduct it. So those are the things I will talk. So what is hijab? Hijab, the objective of hijab is to identify the potential hazards and the operability problems. And these are identified by looking at the design intent and the deviations from the design intent. When there are, if, if anything which is designed for a particular purpose, there are certain parameters. If those parameters are maintained, obviously no problem, it should work. But when the problem comes, whenever there are deviations from the design intent, and when there are deviations in design intents, they may result into unsafe conditions or accidents and various losses. So we look into the processes, both those, the new processes which are bringing in our operations and also those processes which are already existing because as we progress unconsciously we can we keep making changes they look very minor at the time of those changes are implemented but when they keep accumulating you reach a stage where your design intent is completely compromised. And if that compromise, if those deviations are not identified, if those deviations are not managed, then rest assured you are preparing for a major accident. And for that's what is the objective of uh, hazard, hazard. And uh, broadly, you can cover hijab in three areas. One is introduction, what is hijab, the definition, processes, blah, blah, blah. And then we use keywords. So we'll talk today about these keywords which are used to conduct the hijab. And then a general methodology, right from identification, preparation, conducting the hijab, coming up with recommendations, uh, and then uh, writing a report, who should attend it, those, those, everything are part of the methodology. Let's see some process, very simple processes. So one of the processes given here is radiation therapy. Radiation therapy is used to treat people. Why we develop processes? Why we have processes? Because they are all useful to human being in one way or other. They can be in petrochemical industries, in oil and gas industries, in engineering industries, in healthcare industries wherever all these processes why we develop to our own betterment to humankind to help humankind so radiotherapy is one of the process which is used to treat people uh, from certain diseases and for that there are some parameters we'll look into that a little later let's take another example of very simple process some heating installation that heating installation can be a process heater used in one of the industry, or this can be a very simple heater, which we use in winter in our houses just to keep ourselves warm. Heating installation, any kind of heating installation. Uh, let's see uh, some more. A railway crossing, you know, it's a process. There is a barrier, there are signals, uh, uh, there are, you know, different uh, indicators there. Even railway crossing or when you cross a railway line, this can be defined as a process. Process uh, is defined as set of interactive, interrelated activities which converts input into output, a desired output. So you will, when you go through some activities, you will always convert your input into output but you may not get desired output unless you have everything. You, you may not achieve the design intent. 
and hedgehog helps you to achieve your design intent um, think about your um, an aer aeroplane uh, nowadays autopilot believe me uh, i have some friends who are working in airlines uh, flying the planes and they keep sitting you know they just keep observing the parameters that's all uh, actually we feel very comfortable we feel very smooth um, actually journey when we are in aeroplane but from safety point of view the risk is high now because it depends on technology what if the computer fails it's very little a pilot can do right uh, so uh, these are all you know uh, processes let's see you know a little bit more so this is an existing process you have one heater a new process means you can change the type of heater you can bring additional heaters and these things keep happening you may change your parameter if you already have a heater in a process industry uh, and you are using it up to certain temperature you may change the parameter and say okay this has still an additional capacity and i can use it for a higher temperature or even oppose it you can go to a lower temperature and unless and that was not design intent and unless you thoroughly study it you identify the causes which can result into some failure that that will really um, result into an accident uh, these are the examples if your radiotherapy machine is designed for around 200 radiations per minute and your heating installation is designed for up to 50 degrees centigrade everything is fine but that's what is our design intent they should work for that but the problem starts when this radiation goes to 1500 or 15000 it is killing and we need to know what are the controls here which will not allow this radiation to go to this level which can harm us or what are the controls in my heating system which will not allow my temperature to go beyond 50 because if the 50 becomes 90 we are definitely looking for a disaster if 200 radiations become 15,000 radiation certain death and, and this is where hedge of help you i did not keep you know uh, process examples here just to give you a very simple and more practical examples here uh, this is what I was telling you, you know, in an aeroplane, if the computer fails, computer doesn't work, you are in the air. Most of the systems, most of the systems uh, have uh, actually driven, are being driven by industries, they were more in the shipping. And uh, if you read and if you have read somewhere, you will know why those industries have taken lead. Because olden days, when a sailor used to sail in his ship, once he goes in the high sea, there was nothing to help him. There were only two. One is God, of course, which is always there. And two, his own systems. So systems have been there in shipping industries uh, in very early days. That's why as the industries goes in other sectors, shipping industries and systems has taken the uh, lead. Uh, so when uh, we talked about this, so we should know, okay, who is really eligible or who is the right person who should perform this hazard. Uh, those who are already aware, they must be aware that hazard is performed by a team of multidisciplinary ex experts. Uh, if you talk about process industries, there are people from instrumentation and control, there are people from process, there are people from mechanical, there are people from management system. So it, it's a brainstorming session where you look into the design intent you look into the design parameter, you look into what can go wrong, and then you look into, okay, if that happens, what controls we have already provided, then you look into whether those controls are adequate or not, and then you make some changes, bring some additional controls. Uh, so how the deviations from the design intent can arise, that's what we should know, and can they impact safety our operability, our safety and operability of the system and what actions are necessary, are those actions are existing or not. And the advantage of this technique is that it encourages the team to consider different ways, less, more, right, those are the uh, keywords and the study becomes much more than a 
mechanistic checklist. It's not checklist, but you all sit together, you all talk together, you have very practical approach, you have a leader who facilitates your discussions, you have a scribe who writes what you are doing, and then you go for the root, you know, this cause effect analysis, and you come up with a very good cause effect sheet, you come with a, a report and recommendation and things like that. So what we do, how do we do it? We actually have some keywords and those keywords are classified into two categories primary keywords and secondary keywords so here if you see uh, there are primary keywords primary keywords are actually a process condition a process parameter flow if you are in a process industry flow is a primary parameter temperature is a primary keyword uh, corrosion absorption erosion all that they are the primary uh, keywords we apply the primary keyword and then we go through the secondary keyword secondary keyword is the problem okay this is my parameter what can go wrong here if what if it becomes more what if it becomes less what if it is not there at all then we apply those secondary keyword and then we see okay if it goes high what are my design controls then we look into those controls, we review those controls and try to identify whether and try to actually determine whether those controls are good enough, adequate enough. If adequate enough, it's still there a residual risk. About risk, uh, every professional keep will tell you that risk, the best way, eliminate it. But elimination is seldomly happens. What you do, you reduce it. You reduce it, you bring it down, and that is called your residual risk. And then you know, oh, it's still there is a risk, but I can take this risk because I have these controls in place. Uh, so that, that's what you do uh, in your hedge up study. So these are the second reverts, no less, more reverts, also other fluctuation, early, late. You apply those words, and then you uh, have the brain is solving, and then you think, what will happen if it becomes less? What will happen if it goes more? What are the controls? Uh, and that's, that's how you know you evaluate. And you keep going through this design intents, applying primary and secondary work, and then see what are the controls available, what additional controls are given there. Some examples are given there. I will not spend much time on those uh, examples. So. Then you also look into the combination. You see, okay, I'm applying these keywords, but then uh, is my combination right? Is it meaningful? And that happens only when you sit in a group, when you sit in a team and there is an open discussion. Everybody has opportunity to talk. Everybody has opportunities to analyze. Everybody's uh, opinion is respected, analyzed, and we come to an agreement um, that yes, this is what we should be doing and this is what is missing. This is what we have to bring in and we are accepted. Thank you. For